Hi, my name is Tim. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be looking at fitting a big brake kit to my latest release. This big brake kit was fitted from as this is an optional extra on the later S2 XE models, and they consist of a larger 308 mm disc and these AP Racing 4 pot calipers. Now the now these calipers are similar to the existing calipers, two pot calipers, just from the same family. But they are slightly large within the four pistons and there are some minor differences. So with these you need to fit a larger disc. Now these larger discs can be fitted with the two pot calipers as long as you use a 10mm spacer on the caliper bolts to get it to fit the disc correctly. There's a few minor differences with these calipers, one of them being that they have two bleed nipples. So on the existing two pot calipers, your brake hose comes in here where the bleed nipple would normally be, and you just have the one bleed nipple. But on these calipers, you have the two bleed nipples, and the brake hose is connected via a banjo bolt here on the back. So that means to fit these, you have to change the brake hose. So this is the new brake hose. Good rich one has a banjo joint here, and so there's two ways you can do this one is you fit the whole fit this brake hose, or you can just get a banjo adapter for the existing hose. So you're having to replace this. Some say you have to take the clam off to replace the brake hose. We're going to have a look at that, see if we need to take the clam off or not. Look at that in a moment. There's a cheaper option to using these AP. Four pot calipers. Some people are using calipers from other models, and one of them is this. This is a caliper from an MGF or TF. They're from the same family of AP four pot calipers, but there's a few differences in these. And firstly, is that these instead of being a radial mount, these were lug mounted fitment. And so what people are doing is cutting off the lug mounts there machine can it machine flat and then drilling two holes through to mount them radial mounted. There's a few problems with doing this. The first one is the calipers are made in two halves and bolted together and they're bolted with these four bolts here. These are on the reverse of the caliper whereas on the Lotus caliper these four bolts are on the front of the front of the caliper. That gives space for the radial mounted bolts to go through here. So if you wanted to drill two holes through here, you have to remove these two bolts and relocate them to this side of the caliper. And because there's a threaded hole going through already, you have to drill a bigger hole and thread a bigger hole and use a threaded bigger bolts through this side. So they can leave to clear this space so you can drill holes through here to mount them radial mounted. The next issue you have with these is because they're directional calipers, these fit on on an MG, they fit in front of the wheel. Whereas on the Lotus you would be fitting them rear of the wheel. And so your bleed nipple is at the wrong end of the caliper at the bottom, not the top. And so you, it's not like you can't just swap them from side to side because these are directional with the position of the pistons. So you have to swap the bleed nipples with the bar at the other end so you can mount them the other way up. Personally, I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't recommend it either. But as these are some of the cheapest 4 pot AP calipers around, the price is between 100 and 200 pounds plus the cost of a so a refurb kit, still cheaper than using the Lotus ones. So to fit this brake hose, you need to remove the access panels at each side to fit them, so you can get access to the bolt on the brake pipe. To do that, you need an Allen key to remove the three bolts to remove the access panel. So we're going to do that now.
three bolts and washers and move. So we move right here to this panel. Next we have to move this cover here. It's two bolts. So here you can clearly see the brake pipe, it comes up here and the connector is here. So using a 13mm spanner on here, you can get some kind of movement to get that free and ease it up. And on this on the work line here, you hold it in place, you can use on this one as a 14mm. The new one I've got here, this one is a 13mm. So you can just poke it pokes through the wheel arch line. You may have to loosen the wheel arch line or remove it just to get a bit of extra space in there. That can be done without removing the clam at all. The first job is to remove the road wheel. down in here you can see where the work pipe goes so this end here goes through a hole here just need to move the window just need to move the wheel arch line out of the way slightly and it can be removed from there when you fit the new one in you no need to remove the clam at all next job is to remove the two bolts holding the caliper on is a size 8 allen head Just turn the wheel to make it easier. Once the bolts are out, the caliper should just come away. That's the old disc got. Now just ready to try the new disc.
of a new disc in place you can see with how much bigger bigger discs are about 10 mil all round I've turned the wheel again so I can get the can of the bolts on easier These need torquing up to 45 newton meters. These discs are sided, so make sure you fit them on the right side. Because these fins here are directional and designed to disperse the heat from the disc when it rotates. Now the caliper's in place, we can test fit the wheel, see if it fits. I'm going to cloth over the caliper so I don't scratch anything. the wheel on now. So I've got the wheel on, the only issue I've got is the weights, the balancing weights on the wheel will catch on my caliper at the moment so I'm going to have to get those removed and rebalanced positioned in a different place so they're not on this inner edge piece. And that will mean the wheel will rotate fine, there's no issues with anything catching. plenty of clearance between the caliper and the wheel. Just when you get here the weights here are in the way of the caliper. Some people say these brake kits can't be fitted to an release, they don't fit the wheels which shows it can be fitted with these idle wheels, I don't know about the other wheels. They certainly fit fine with these, some say they only fit with the OZ wheels on the 135R. But you can see from here they fit fine with the 111S wheels. So I've also got these brackets so I can fit the front two pot calipers to the rear wheel. I'm going to use these as well as the handbrake caliper. These can be fitted to the back of a hub that means you can have a two pot caliper in the front of the side of a wheel along with the original caliper at the back which gives more of a balanced braking with having the four pots on the front and two on the back you may need to fit a larger master cylinder to cope with the extra braking pressure needed we'll find out on that okay, so that's going to conclude my video for now the next videos will be when I actually fit them myself thank you, thank you for watching